A survey in the UK done by Balance Active found many younger women are embarrassed to talk about their bodies, possibly keeping them from getting the necessary care. I'm joined now by Samantha Gerard, the founder of Talk, the new sex ed. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for having me. And this is such an important topic too, because we're not just talking about you know, a little embarrassment about our bodies. This is really about the health of our bodies. Yes. So we wanted to pull up some of the statistics from this, sur this survey. 39% um, uh, surveyed said that they were embarrassed to talk to a healthcare professional about their, their bodies and specifically private parts of their bodies. Right. So when you see a number like that, what does that say to you? I mean, it's part of why I named my organization Talk the New Sex Ed because we really need to be talking about these kinds of things, especially things as basic as being able to talk to your healthcare provider about what's going on in your body. But if you think about it, culturally, we're constantly telling women, you're not thin enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not skinny enough, you're not, right? So you have all of these market forces acting on them, right. making them feel bad about themselves. And you know this, one of a great way for me to sell you a product that you may not need is to make you feel bad about something about yourself. Like your life would be so much better if only your hair. If only you had this skincare to and keep you. And then I primed you to sell you something that you don't need. So in terms of right. that, I think we're also seeing some intergenerational things. If you're not comfortable, the likelihood that you're gonna talk about it in your family with your children. Also it, gonna be an issue. Correct. Yeah. And I think too, uh, so, the survey went on to talk about intimate issues. So when mm -hmm. experiencing an intimate issue, 30% turned to the internet for answers instead of maybe someone who could actually help. Ugh, it kills me. <laughs> so, and, and you know, as we know, if you have a headache and you turn to the internet, it can be this Best. you know onslaught of different issues that yes. can really make you paranoid when really if you just talk to the right people. It's a true story. There are healthcare providers that will listen, that will talk, whose job it is actually to answer questions about your body and solve your problem for you. Let's throw another one at you. 49% to talk about STIs with doctor, uh, with their doctor. Um, this is another one. I mean, this is, this is something that happens. It is a widespread issue. Um, and we should be able to talk, this is a real health concern. <laughs> we have 21 million new cases of sexually transmitted infections every single year in the United States and stuff like this is not helping. Right. So in terms of that, yeah, like it's really important for your long-term health, for your future fertility, for things like that. A lot of these things are treatable um, and if not curable, manageable and well, and even when, in the case of some things like HPV, yes. we know that there can be consequences decades Absolutely. Down the road. And we're a healthcare town and we're under vaccinated in Pittsburgh in terms of getting out ahead of that. It's essentially could eradicate cervical cancer if everyone who was was able to get the vaccine actually got it. So let's talk about this because I, I want your take on this. Sure. Um, in, the, in the survey, younger generations cite fear of judgment. An older generation cite it's against cultural and societal norms to talk about their bodies. What do you, what's the takeaway from there and how do we get past this? I would say for moms in terms of that intergenerational play, trying not to infect your kids with whatever, you know, hang ups that you might have about your own body. Um, you mentioned turning to the internet. I actually built a platform so people can access high quality information specifically about. It also models communication between parent, child, between people in a relationship about how they have important conversations about sexual health around STIs, around birth control, around all of these different things. You know, I think that in some cases, I, a lot of parents think, okay, we've had, we've had the talk, we've done that, maybe we've had it once, and maybe we've talked to our daughters and sons about what's about to happen to their body through puberty, yes. and that checks that box, and then we don't revisit it again. I think, so, when I started my organization, I talked a lot about how we live in a sex-saturated culture that's uncomfortable talking about sex. So if parents think about how much garbage messaging kids are getting at 24-7, right. what are you counteracting that with? And a lot of parents fear that if they talk with their kids about these kinds of things, that it's somehow going to put ideas in their head. They're consuming it 24-7, 365. Right. There's no escaping it. It's ubiquitous at this point. So I would my challenge to parents would be, what are you going to do? according to your own beliefs and values to counter message all of these negative forces that are acting on your Right, kids. because if we're not informing them and, and arming them with the proper information, yes. they are going to find it, they are gonna hear it, and they're not gonna have the right information yes. with them. Yes. Okay, and so you have a website. We're gonna link people up to this because I think it's yeah. really important. Uh, you have a ton of information on there. Campuschat.org is specifically built for, it's curated by me, all of the resources, completely and totally vetted by professionals. Everybody's read the stories. The information is solid and it provides people with practice when they're not used to having conversations. Samantha, thank you so much for coming on and talking about this. My pleasure.